Spirited Art. Today we're going to be painting an adult painting called Beach Dunes. You will have started with a blank canvas because we are going to draw our beach dunes and our horizon line and all of that step by step together. We have three rules here at Spirited Art. The first one is that this is totally your painting. So if you want to make it look different, if you want to be creative and let that flow, that's great. Number two, don't drink your paint water. It's going to get gross. Number three, keep your brushes in the water when you're not using them because this is acrylic paint. It dries very quickly, which is great for your canvas because if something happens and you don't love it, you can let it dry and paint right over it. But if it's in your brushes, they're going to get hard. So leave them in the water and you won't have that problem. All right, let's get started. We're going to take our little brush and we're actually going to use that yellow that you have on your palette. It's called Raw Sienna and we're gonna do some drawings. These are gonna be our beach dunes. This is called your underpainting. You're gonna come a little less than halfway. So if halfway is here, I'm gonna go a little bit less than halfway and I'm gonna make a large sort of hill sloping down to about the center of your canvas. These are just guides for your beach dunes. So if you didn't love that, it's fine. You can paint over it. Same thing on the other side, but we're gonna start a little bit lower you're still gonna curve on down to the center, and at some point those lines will cross and that's fine. The center dune is just a small hill in between. Okay, you can put your little brush in the water, separate your plates, and we're gonna mix our first color. It's gonna be the sand. So take your big brush, you're going to take about a half scoop to a scoop of white, put it on your mixing plate, and take a big scoop of that raw sienna color. When you mix, you wanna push the paint to the center so that you're mixing in a pretty small pile. You want all that paint for your canvas, not for your paper plate. You should be coming up with like a light sand color. And we're gonna use this to fill in. Fill in those beach dunes. You can come right up and over your line. If your paint is not 100% mixed, that's okay because there should be color variation in this sand. So if it's not one color, that's okay. We're actually gonna add some of that raw sienna on top of this sand color that we've made to give it some variation. So just do one dude at a time. While that's still wet, I'm gonna take my palette, dip my brush, just the tip of the bristles into that raw sienna color, and right near the edge, I'm gonna take it from the top to the bottom and just give it a little bit of darkness. The reason I'm doing that near the edge is so that you'll be able to tell where each of the dunes stops and starts. We don't want a line, but we do want a little bit of variation so that we can see the stop and start of each dune. If you wanna put a little bit of this color inside your dune and brush it in, you can do that too. That way it looks a little bit more like sand. All right, we're going to do that on each of our sand dunes. By the way, if I'm painting a lot faster than you, that's totally fine. Just stop the video and catch up, and then you can start it again when you're ready. We're trying to keep these to about 20 minutes. It might be a little bit hard with this painting, but I'm doing my best. So I'm filling in that dune with the color we mixed, the sand color. And then I'm gonna take my regular palette, that spicy mustard color, on my big brush, and I'm just gonna go right along the edge there. And give it a little bit of definition. Again, you don't want a line. You're trying to blend it in. As long as your paint's wet, the colors will mix together on your canvas and blend right in. You can add it throughout the dune, just to give it some variation. If you mix kind of a dark sand color, you could do the same thing with white and give yourself some lighter areas. Just mix that white in and it will lighten up different areas. As long as it's wet, it'll mix right in to make that light sand color. You can do that over here. This one's probably still wet too. And if worse comes to worse and this one dries and you try to use the white, just use the raw sienna. You can go back and forth, okay? All right, last dune in the middle there. I'm going to put on the original color we mixed, that light sand color. And then I'm going to add some straight raw sienna 
into that dune. All right, we'll add our grasses in a little while. Let's start to work on our sky. Rinse your brush really well. We don't want our sky to be green, so we want all of that yellow out. Go ahead and touch the bottom of your cup and stir to get all of the yellow out of the bristles. Okay. Tap it on your napkin so it's not too wet. And we're gonna take about a half scoop of white and a full scoop of blue. This should be a light blue for the sky. That's how we're gonna start out. If your blue is too dark, you can actually add a little more white. I'm gonna add just a little more white Notice I'm going along the edge of my pile of white so that I am not contaminating the whole pile. All right, I'm gonna start at the top, big strokes with your elbow, not just from your wrist, but actually from your elbow. You can spread out that blue paint. Again, if it's not completely mixed, that's okay because the sky is not one flat color either. It has some variation, especially when there's clouds like there is at our beach today. We're going to start at the top. Come about a third of the way down the canvas. And then what you're actually going to do, keep the blue that's in your brush. You're just going to go straight into your white. And then you're going to mix that in and bring that lighter blue down. It's just going to bring it, make it a little bit lighter and you can bring that down. Don't touch your beach dunes yet. We're just bringing that blue color down. All right. All right, let's put our big brush in the water. And before we get any further down, we're gonna give ourselves that line, the horizon line with our little brush little brush, straight blue, okay? You can roll your brush to get a nice point. Roll it as you come out, get a nice point on your brush. And what we're gonna go is dune to dune. You're gonna go over top of where that middle dune is, okay? You don't wanna run into your middle dune and you just wanna give yourself a nice straight line across, okay? Straight blue. You can go over it. If it's not real dark initially, you can go over it with your little brush. Okay. You don't need to use a straight edge, just keep it straight across. Okay, so now we have a place to go. We won't go past that with our clouds. All right. Let's come back with our big brush. We're gonna take white in our brush and we're gonna make some cir a circular motion. Here's the beginning of our clouds. They're going to be pretty much throughout the bottom half to third of our sky. You can make it more cloudy if you want. They don't have to go all the way across. But I'm doing large circular motions. If your blue is really wet, you may not be getting much white. I'm gonna do this. This is a light blue right now, coming straight up to that line. And I'm gonna go over it with some more white once this dries and the, that white will sit on top instead of mixing it. All right. You're going to put this light blue that's in your brush, or if you need to go back to your palette, that's fine too, right below the water line and all the way right up to your dunes. If your dunes are wet, just be careful. You can hit it with a hot hair dryer if you want, just to make sure. And we're gonna put some waves and some little white caps in there, but initially we're just gonna make that light blue. Okay, I'm using my big brush. If you prefer to use your little brush, that's totally fine. I'm actually gonna take my little brush out 
and put some blue lines in there. You can go back and forth between blue and white to the extent you want to. Real light, just add some horizontal. Everything's horizontal in the horizon and the sky, okay? When you're adding lines, I'm just adding some blue. A lot of it is blending in with what I have there because that light blue is still wet and that's fine. It's just to give you some variation in your water, okay? So you can see some blue going across. We'll add some white on top of that when it dries. Okay. All right, let's work on some of our grasses. We're gonna make that green first, and actually we're gonna make the gray first, sorry. We're gonna make these little pebbles, and that's gonna give us an anchor for our grasses. I'm gonna put my little brush down. I'm gonna use my big brush for mixing and then my little brush for applying. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Mine has some blue in it, so that's okay because I'm also adding black, just a little bit of black. That's gonna give me a gray and then a little bit of the yellow for that olivey gray color. I'm gonna add just a little more of that raw sienna color. All right. This is going to be the color for our rocks and also with a, maybe a little bit lighter for our fence. Okay, so I'm going to put some dabs of rocks. This Again, this is just the anchor for our grass. It doesn't need to be a lot. There's one kind of right here where the dunes meet. Maybe one kind of towards the top of that middle dune. And then top of the right hand dune, somewhere in the middle there. And maybe one more, one or two more tufts right along the edge of this right hand dune, okay? Then the other thing we're gonna do with this color is we're gonna outline our fence. You can see in the example, there's uh, six here, six on that side, you don't have to, and then there's a path going in. So you just wanna leave the path in the center. They are not straight up and down. They are kind of turned, I mean, they're rectangular shape, but they're not gonna be straight up and down. They are gonna go off from the, from the bottom of the canvas so I'm basically making three sides of a rectangle and I'm filling them in. Some can be thinner than others, but you don't wanna make them too fat. We've all seen these kind of fences as we walk to the beach. They might not be straight across. You may wanna make a little bit of a diagonal line at the top of some of them. So that's one, two, three, four, I'm gonna do five on this side. This one's small. And we're gonna put some other colors on top of these two. I've left the center open so that there's a path to walk through. One, two, and actually this is gonna go right over where I put one of my grasses, but that's fine. The fence is actually in front of the grass, so I can either put the grass up behind it or I can just skip a space for those grass. Okay, I'm gonna make this one tall. And I'm gonna do maybe one more. All right, so there's my fence. Now I'm gonna make the color for my grass. Rinse your brush. This green is going to be a scoop of the raw sienna color, that's your yellow. I need, probably need a little bit more. And then about a half scoop of blue. We can always add more blue 
but this is going to be our green. It's not a very bright green. That's because our yellow, the yellow that we're using is not very bright. All right, again, I'm going to um, use my little brush to apply it, make sure it's mixed. Little brush, dry it off. And when you make grasses, you're gonna start at the bottom. That's why we have these anchors. You're gonna start at the bottom, and as you pull up, you're pulling away from the canvas. You don't wanna to touch hard to the canvas from the very start. This is a very light touch, and you're pulling away as you go up. That's gonna make a thinner and more wispy grass. You're gonna make a whole bunch of them. As you make more and more, your paint's gonna dry out, which is fine because some of them will look wispier than others. You can kind of go in some different directions. We're going to add more colors to these, so don't worry about that. This is just the beginning color. But from each of those areas where we put the rocks, you're gonna give yourself some grasses. Remember, you're starting at the bottom, pulling up and away from the canvas. These should not be real thick. Very light touch. You can, if you don't love this green, you don't have to put a lot of it in there. Okay, we're gonna rinse our brush. We're gonna go straight yellow, this raw sienna color. You're gonna put that in your grass too. It's okay if some of it blends with the green, that's fine. It'll give you a different shade of green in there and that'll be very pretty. So if you wanna go right over top of some of your grasses with this color, that's fine. Give yourself some unique grasses too. And then on some of these, you wanna make them taller with this color, okay? This is where, with this color, those little tufts are gonna come off to the side. So you wanna give yourself some long ones too. Same thing, very light touch. The ones that are going to have your sort of tall tufts at the, at the end of them, they can be, they don't have to be straight up and down. You can give them a little bit of a curve. And you can have as many of those as you like. All right, the thing we do need to realize with these tall tufts is that they would all be blowing the same way, okay? So what you're gonna do is take your brush in that yellow, and we're gonna, let's say the wind is blowing towards the left. So we're gonna do short little strokes off to the left on these tall tufts. They're kind of, depending on how it is oriented, they might be diagonal lines. They're not necessarily straight across. They're kind of diagonally down to the side, okay? Even if your little piece of grass is curving over, it's still kind of diagonal and down. Remember, they're all gonna be blowing the same way. If you mess up and they're not, probably no one's gonna notice, but that's what we're going for. Okay, lots of little lines. And don't worry, we'll give them a little more definition. Maybe one, two, three, four, four, five on each one. Little dash lines, okay? All right, let's add a little bit of that raw sienna color into our fence, not a lot. I'm gonna add a little bit into each one. I'm basically adding it on the right-hand side, maybe a little bit at the top too, that would be kinda of cool. If you feel like you wanna rub it for a little bit of a different effect, you could do that. That'll spread the paint, it'll make it a little bit thinner and less of a line. So you can use your finger over top, spread it out a little. What you wanna do is add the paint first then use your finger to push it out, blend it out a little bit. Okay. All right, so each of my fence posts has a little bit of that raw sienna color in it. All right, we're ready for a little bit of black and then we will finish our clouds. I'm gonna rinse my brush with black. You wanna make sure your brush is dry. Those bristles, very dry. We don't want this black to drip down our canvas. All right, I'm gonna put some very, very light strokes through my 
the tufts on those grasses. Again, if you don't love how this looks, you can skip it. Maybe one or two on each one. You're also gonna put a little bit in the bottom of the grass itself. Very, very light touch. You don't want a big black line. You just want like a little bit of black coming out of each one. It should not be a thick line. It should be very, very thin. You're barely touching the canvas. It's just to add a little bit more dimension to those grasses. And we're gonna do that same thing, a very, very light, light highlight to our fence post, okay? Maybe not every single one in the same exact place, but I'm, I'm putting a little bit of black on each. Okay, the last thing with black is that we're going to make a very thin line straight across. Skip the fence post. Okay, and then another one right here. So you're in the same horizontal plane there, but you do skip the fence post. This is just like a little line going in between. If you have a Sharpie marker and you want to use that, that's totally fine. Sometimes it's hard to get a thin line. You do have this going off the left side of the canvas because you anticipate that there is more fence on both sides. So that's on the right and on the left, you still put those lines. They're connecting to something, you just can't see it, it's not in the picture. All right, last thing, we can rinse that little brush. We're gonna add some white in our sky and in our water. Little bit of white, right where those dunes meet, if you can still see it. If not, just go right up on the edge. Little bit of dabbing there. That is where the water is hitting in between the dunes. Just a little dab. You don't need a lot. All right, and then our big brush is gonna take some white. We're gonna go back into our clouds and just brighten them up, make them just a little bit whiter. I'm going to move this light blue off the top of my white and I might need to rinse my brush again just so that I'm in clean white. Add that right on top. You can see how now that my background's dry, it's not blending in as much. And again, if you want to use your finger to push the paint around, it especially gives the clouds at the edge a little bit of fluffiness. It makes it look fluffy because it's spreading the paint out a little bit more. Just gonna finish off those clouds. That's my beach scene. I hope you enjoyed painting with us today. Thanks for working on the scene with you, with me, and I hope that you can enjoy this beach and pretend that you're there now. Thanks.